Hey everybody, this is Ian Riccoboni from Ring of Honor and you're watching Ambi. Hey everyone, it's Alicia and I would like to welcome you to my interview with Ian Riccoboni. Hey Hello. Alicia, I'm so, I'm so glad to be here. We <laughs> met for the first time last year here in right Toronto here. and I love being in Canada. I love Tim Hortons, so this is a big thrill for me. <laughs> <laughs> I already saw the tweets you've been sending out. You're like, I cannot wait to just eat so much Timmy's. Oh, it's it's amazing. It, do they call it Timmy Hortz up here? It's like Timmy Hose. Timmy Hose, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm trying to get with the lingo here. I just want to be sure I'm on track. So. Right, and you're down with the Timbits? Is that something Yo, you Yo, Timbits, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> <laughs> what's what's the go-to order? Uh, go-to order is uh, large iced coffee, uh, mocha, and then I'll do Timbits or uh, maple. I like oh, the maple okay. glazed donut. Yeah, right in Canada, right? Maple Absolutely. <laughs> and it's funny because in the states we will get maple like in the fall, but then it'll disappear real quick. Oh, so that's yeah, a shame. Yeah. Yeah, so. <laughs> Embrace it while you can, right? Absolutely. <laughs> well, aside from loving Tim Hortons, how does it feel back to be here in Toronto with Ring of Honor, War of the Worlds? It's crazy. Um, in the last year, it, Ring of Honor's grown so much, and we've had record attendance, we've had record television ratings, record pay-per-view buys. Uh, Honor Club's just launched where everybody can watch Ring of Honor uh, live like we will be here tonight in, in War of the Worlds Toronto. Um, but it's kind of amazing because this time last year, uh, Kevin Kelly was transitioning the role to me, uh, and he's been such a great mentor, somebody that's really been such a positive influence on where, I'm, where I've been and where I'm going, and now it's kind of like the training wheels are off, and a year later, <laughs> uh, Colt and I have found such a, a cool, fun such groove. Such a good groove. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and it's, it's something that I've always wanted to do, but never really thought would happen, and, and to just kind of be living and experiencing, it's been really neat. Is this so. surreal for you? Because you even called him your wrestling dad, and it's like, right. okay, now I'm, I'm all grown up, dad. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'll send, you know, I'll send, send him pictures and things like that, and happy birthday, by the way, Kev. It's, it's his birthday <laughs> two days ago. But. Happy birthday. <laughs> Yeah, so it, it's been really neat. And Colt's been like the ultimate big brother. Um, Colt's the same age as my actual big brother. So it's really neat to kind of be able to talk about the things we share a lot in common, TV, movies, music. Uh, if you listen to our commentary, you'll notice there's a lot of 80s and 90s rap references. Uh, we quote the same movies, so it's it's kind of weird, but it's kind of fun. We're <laughs> so, on the same wavelength. Yeah, <laughs> so I, I couldn't have asked, I couldn't have fallen backwards into a better commentary partner. That's Colt's awesome. amazing, yeah. Well, for you growing up, your mom was really invested in the fact that you loved wrestling. Like, she would oh, give yeah. you subscriptions to wrestling magazines, action figures, and even get you sh uh, tickets for local shows in Allentown. So, mm -hmm. do you remember a time when wrestling wasn't in your life? I can't. Um, <laughs> and even my early babysitter, like, I remember, I grew up, uh, I grew up in a trailer park in my early life was in a trailer park in Allentown, Pennsylvania. And across the trailer park was a woman named Pat. And Pat's husband uh, loved wrestling. And so they would have on tapes and, and wrestling. And it was crazy. I literally don't remember not being into professional wrestling. <laughs> so it's always been something that's been really a part of my life. Um, and even as I grew up and we moved into a house and, and different things happened when I went off to college, it was still something that I always just really enjoyed and really loved. And um, it's a lot like comfort food. And it's it's really wild to be a part of it. I feel the exact same way because I've been watching since I was super little as well. Yeah. And now you just kind of walk into a place like this and you're like, whoa, I'm actually a part of it. It's very yeah. cool. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing. And and to be able to be with, with Ring of Honor at a time like this, uh, it, it's been incredible too. Because just to see the growth, uh, to see guys working so hard and for the payoffs for, for guys like the Young Bucks who had been grinding for almost a decade and, and Jay Lethal who's been an amazing wrestler for over a decade uh, and to attract stars like Cody and to really be invested in what we're doing uh, it's kind of incredible but you mentioned my mom uh, my mom definitely is the biggest influence in wrestling uh, and it wasn't until years later that I found out she took me to the events to see Rick Rude and to see Edge and <laughs> Test uh, she definitely has a type uh, so <laughs> My mom's a, a wonderful person, and, and my dad, you know, bless him, never a sports fan, never a wrestling fan, but he would come along sometimes, too. <laughs> so. And what was it about drive throughs where she would be working, and there was actually yeah. Because there's such a rich wrestling history there, right? It, it's crazy. So Allentown, Pennsylvania, for those who don't know, uh, hosted a lot of the WWF TV tapings from 78 to 85, and it, it was crazy because the Wild Simone's Training Center was in Allentown for quite some time, and guys like Batista 
uh, Billy Kidman, um, uh, just a number of people trained and, and got their start in Allentown. And so she would see almost everybody that was training at the Wild Samoans Training Center at any given time come through, including Afa, including Samu. Uh, and so it, it's just incredible. She'd meet these guys. She'd come home and say, oh, I met somebody who calls himself Leviathan. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Is he going to, you know, I was 11, 11 or 12, is he going to be in the WWE? She goes, oh, he said he will be. <laughs> and then it, eight years later, you see, you turn on WWE, you turn on WrestleMania and there's Batista. That's and awesome. my mom, oh, that, that's the guy that used to come through the drive-thru. That's why I ordered a burger. <laughs> yeah. Or, oh, that, that Billy Kidman guy, he was really skinny. He used yeah. to come through. and <laughs> So it's kind of incredible. Um, and, how it works. Yeah. And even the Nasty Boys somehow. So... The big joke between my wife and I, she's she says, "Oh, you're verified on Twitter, so that means you know people know who you are. You're the mo- you're going to be the most famous person in Allentown." I said, "Well, look, hold on. The Rock is from Bethlehem, which is right next door, the sister city." And then I was like, "I'm not even going to be the most famous wrestling person because there's the Nasty Boys, there's Billy Kidman." <laughs> Tons of people in Allentown, but incredible rich history there. Absolutely. <laughs> well, as we were mentioning before, I do have to say that I do love listening to you on commentary because you just have the gift of the gab. So is that oh, something you. you've always had, just being able to converse with people very easily? I'm actually really shy. Really? Like, you're like really, really shy. And it was something that I had to overcome. It was something that I had to... When I realized that this was something that I really wanted to do and really invested myself in it, uh, I had to overcome a lot of anxiety. I had to overcome a lot of pressure that I'd put on myself. Uh, and it was kind of weird. Like it, I, I didn't realize I was shy until I started to pursue opportunities. Yeah. And I started a lot like yourself where I would go to different places and, and I did public access TV. And then I did internet TV, which turned into a cable TV show. And you never realize how, sh- how shy you are maybe until you actually have to start doing it. And, and it was never the preparation. It was never the, uh, the interview itself, but it was always that initial introduction, okay. and it was always just meeting the person for the first time. So, uh, it was something I don't know. The best way to prepare for it was just to do it and to jump in. But I was so shy growing up to the point where I wasn't embarrassed that I was watching wrestling, but I just kind of I wanted to watch it alone. Like I wanted okay. to, yeah. So. This has been this has been fun for me. I've broken out of my shell a little bit. Well, I remember you saying once in an interview, it's like, okay, you know what? I don't have to be nervous. You just take a deep breath, mm-hmm. realize what you're saying, be slow a little bit, and just enjoy it. So is that kind of what you do now every single time? Oh, it's incredible. And and my safety blanket, yes. And my safety blanket's Colt. Uh, Colt makes it so much fun. And Colt's a guy that he's been around the world and he's been everywhere. And I know that if if I need to slow down or if we need to, to take a break or change directions, that he's going to be there. And I, I trust him to be there as my partner. And it's it's been awesome. And the one thing I've gotten better at, and this is just for enjoyment, this isn't necessarily for uh, strategy at this point, is to, to enjoy it and to breathe and to look around. Um, at Supercard of Honor, we had close to 6,000 people. And for me... I'd never been a part of anything like that. And so to look around, um, I actually turned around and took a picture of the Kenny and Cody match. And you can barely tell who they are in the photo because <laughs> uh, we were in the commentary. Yeah. We were in the crow's nest. But uh, it was something that I wanted to be able to say I was there and, and enjoyed it. And I lost myself in the match. And it was it was awesome. That's such a, I love when those little moments happen. You yeah. kind of pinch yourself like, wait, I'm here. <laughs> yeah, especially. I mean, it was only five years ago where I had introduced myself to some folks at the Monster Factory and said my friend wanted to do it. Right? That's how shy I, I was. I, yeah. <laughs> I didn't even say that I wanted to do it. I said my friend did. So, yeah. Well, one of my favorite parts about watching the commentary team is when you actually have the guests and the wrestlers sit beside mm. you. They talk about the matches, and you also get to kind of do a little on-the-fly interview with them as well. Absolutely. So if you could pick the brain of anybody, whether it's a wrestler, celebrity, musician, we're going to get into the music aspect in a a second, but who would that be? Wow. Uh, This might surprise a lot of people. Um, I'm a huge Bruce Springsteen fan. I would love to interview Bruce Springsteen. Um, He's written an amazing book. He shares so much with his music. So I don't know if I'd be able to get any more out of him that's already been given because he's so he's so open and he, he's such a great storyteller. But I would want to talk to Bruce St- Springsteen or Rod Stewart. I'm okay. a huge Rod Stewart fan. All right. Well, you mentioned yeah. books there. And you, of course, wrote The uh, 100 Greatest Phillies of All Time, <laughs> yeah. which went number one on Amazon in the baseball section. Crazy. Awesome. Yeah, I did not expect that. But, it, <laughs> but as far as baseball goes, you actually collect Phillies bobbleheads. I do. Uh, I have over 50. I have almost all the stadium giveaway bobbleheads. Uh, and I have a lot of Iron Pigs ones. Uh, the Iron Pigs are the triple their minor league team in Allentown. Okay. So 
It's amazing. I had a friend that worked with the Iron Pigs that used to sneak them out the back door. I hope he doesn't get in trouble. But, um, but yeah, he used to grab me them, and then I had some Phillies contacts that would get that's me some awesome. of those. Yeah. And is the collection ever growing? Like that's the main, yeah. that's the main thing you collect? I, that's the main thing. And I used to collect uh, LJN action figures when I was growing up, the big rubber uh, WWF ones. But the, the big thing for me now is we have an 18-month-old Zach, and there's this part of me that wants him to be able to play with everything and learn and explore. But when he gets too close to the bobbleheads, it's, I get a little nervous. So they're mostly on the shelves right now. Give it a couple years, right? Yeah. They'll and get to him eventually. Yeah, and then we can, we can talk through him, explain right? him, all that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Well, when we found out we were going to be doing this interview in Toronto, mm -hmm. we were both really excited because we found out we have a mutual love of 70s glam rock. Yeah. And we were so excited to share your love of oh, that. Oh, God. So absolutely. Uh, T-Rex. They're, they're my guys. Mark Bolin. I love Mark Bolin. I love New York Dolls. I, I, up and down. Just love everything. And then, you know, also groups like Humble Pie that aren't quite glam rock, but Steve Marriott is an amazing lead singer, an amazing front man. Um, to think that he was in a group with, uh, with Peter Frampton is kind of incredible too, all that talent in the same place. And then, like I said, Rod Stewart. I know it's not glam, but there's something just cool about Rod <laughs> Stewart. Like, he's, what, 75, almost 80? Yeah. And Rod Stewart is just, like, the coolest dude of all time. <laughs> so <still> Yeah. <laughs> so I, I absolutely love, uh, you know, early 70s rock, and, and I love Slade. Uh, and it's, it's funny, my dad, my dad never really likes sports. He doesn't really like wrestling. But later, we've really bonded, he and I, over music because as I discover groups that were big when, when he was growing up and yeah. that he was into, um, I'll say, hey, Dad, I, you know, I was listening to this Humble Pie. I was listening to 30 Days in the Hole by Humble Pie. And he goes, oh, what? You know, great. Next, you'll hear this great new band called Fog Hat. And like, <laughs> <laughs> so he'll, he'll rip me a little that's bit. That's awesome. Yeah. But it's been really neat because that's, you know, my dad and I, my parents and I have always been really close, but it's been cool to kind of finally break the iceberg on, yeah. on something that he actually it's likes. It's a new thing for you. Right? Instead you of, dive right into it. Yeah. Instead <laughs> of him dragging him to the Phillies games and dragging him, him and my mom to the wrestling events. So. <laughs> and have you been able to see any of the bands that you really love live? Oh, yeah. So yeah. I, I was a big concert goer. Um, I'm also a hair metal guy, which is kind of weird. Don't kind of kayfabe that. Um, <laughs> I, I've seen Guns N' Roses a bunch. I've seen Poison. Uh, I've seen Dawkin, White Snake, uh, the Scorpions. I love nice. the Scorpions. They're, they're awesome. Um, but yeah, but I, my favorite groups nowadays, it's funny, I got to like re-catch up because I used to say, oh, yeah, I've seen The Strokes four times, which used to be cool like 10 years ago when they were like on top of the world. But now it's kind of like, oh, that, that's that group that kind of that was awesome. And then they you just kind of went away. People, like, uh, so many of my friends, like, I was just at a party a couple weeks ago. We played The Strokes for, like, two hours. So See? they are still super cool. Yeah. Fun. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. you. Know I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> that was, like, my go-to. Yeah. Like, I was always, like, okay, I'll just say I saw The Strokes a bunch, and then people will think I'm all right. And then... <laughs> And now they're, they haven't released an album in a while. <laughs> so about five years, I think. So There's a new Edge within Casablanca's record, though. Ooh, see, I liked his first solo one. Check that was really good, yeah. <laughs> 2009, <laughs> I remember that. He was sitting there with a dog and... Yeah, I big Julian fan, so... Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> well, I like how the main things you tweet about are, of course, wrestling, sports, and then the other thing is live PD. Oh, yeah. So that's, that's my wife and I's favorite show. <laughs> Uh, shout out to Officers and Dejas in El Paso, Texas. <laughs> and Garo Brown could be the Ring of Honor World Champion oh at God. some point. So uh, I'm just saying there, there's a bunch of wrestling folks um, online. The Fray Movement's one. Chris Zellner's another guy. Uh, that There's a guy named Lane also that tweets a lot. And there's this weird wrestling subgroup that also like tweets Live PD. <laughs> so if we don't have a Ring of Honor event, yeah. I'm probably watching Live PD on Fridays and Saturdays. Okay. So. There's this one thing you tweet, and you're like, oh, wasn't that such a cute transition on Live PD? And it just made me laugh so hard. Because like, I'll watch it with my family as well. And yeah. it's one of those shows you watch, and you're just like, I just... I just don't get people, but it's yeah. so entertaining. Well, the one, the one where the, the older gentleman was, it was his 85th birthday. He was drunk and his wife called the police, not because he was belligerent, but because he was so happy. She was afraid he was going to fall down on his way back to his bed. <laughs> and I thought it was the cutest thing that ever happened. And she was worried for his safety, <laughs> not because he would be violent, but yeah. because, Hey, He's you might so fall, happy. you might fall down. You might break a hip. So the police <laughs> officer in, in Nevada Walked him back to his bed. I thought it was the cutest thing ever. It was amazing. <laughs> you know the officers' names. You know all the cities. Like this is, this is a super fan right here. Oh yeah, I am. A, I am a live PD super fan. Hundred <laughs> percent. 
<laughs> we'll just to wrap things up. I do want to leave it with all the wrestling fans who oh, are going yeah. to be viewing. Is there anything you want to say to all oh, of us? Oh, uh, you know, thank you for making Ring of Honor, you know, the, the 2016, 2017. I, I started in 2014, and since becoming the lead announcer, we've grown and grown and grown, um, and it's because of the fans. It's because of fan support, fan interest. Um, you know, we have a great group of athletes here that, that put everything into what they give to you on television, on our Honor Club events, and on our pay-per-views, and w- I'm so happy for them, for our wrestlers, that it's being reciprocated in fan support. Uh, and it's just amazing to be a part of it as we grow. And just wanted to thank everybody for watching on Ring of Honor every week. So I appreciate it. It's been so exciting just seeing the company grow, seeing how you've just been killing it. Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so thank you for joining me today. Absolutely. Thanks, Alicia. Oh, it was it's great talking pleasure. with you. <laughs> and remember, to everybody viewing, you can visit us at alicia2.com for all exclusive interviews and features. See ya.